one. Welcome to the Witchwood Lightforge Arena card review, where we tell you all the card scores uh, uh, from the Lightforge. That, Words. Uh, that that's going right. to happen. Um, so all of these are going to be live um, on day zero. Uh, it's the Lightforge.com, and we're here to kind of explain why cards are scored this way and how to play each of those cards and what kind of what kind of decks may go well with a particular card. Um, they're probably not going to hear too much about it here because we're doing neutrals, and neutrals are a little. Uh, um, a little uh, vanilla, especially the ones we get in this set. Uh, but but in later ones of the class ones, it'll it'll be a lot more deeper analysis. And we're going to break this down into two episodes. Uh, this video will be the good one. You're watching the right video. This will have the cards 100 and above that you'll actually see in the arena I actually want to pick. And then our, our next video will be about the cards rated below 100 that you will not want to pick, but you will be forced to pick because it's 10.4 and you have to pick bad cards. Um, and, uh, and we'll tell you how to, how to kind of survive and deal with it and what decks those cards really fit into. Yeah. So, uh, let's get started with sort of just the general theme of the neutral cards, right? So gone are, uh, the categorization of commons, rares, epics, and whatever. Now we're just dealing with cards and, you know, we're going to see what buckets they fulfill, but... Well, okay, so epics are still seen half as as often as uh, true, neutrals and true. rares. A little less than half. Um, the, no one knows the exact percentage, but it's not actually half. Right. So, uh, but <laughs> I would say, if you have been sort of used to um, the expansions from the past year, right, the past three expansions, just know right off the bat, there is no sort of world beater like common card. You know, there is no super premium. Uh, like, or, sorry. I'm just going to go card. down the list here. I'm going to actually take off legendaries for now um, just to not okay. screw with it. Basilisk. Yeah. Primordial Drake. Mm -hmm. So Basilisk Gastropod. was from the latest expansion. Uh -huh. And then uh, Drake was from Angoro, uh -huh. right? And then uh, you're not going to see Bone Mare until down here, but before the nerf, Bone Mare would have been right up here with Basilisk and Drake. Yep. And that was uh, two expansions ago. Uh -huh. So and, once again, and, in each of the past three expansions, uh, uh, we have gotten uh, super premium. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going here. Stubborn okay. Gastropod, another Angoro card. Yep. <laughs> Dragon Slayer. That's, uh, that's a KFT card, I want to say. Uh, or maybe sure. a, no, maybe that's a Cabal's and Catacombs card. I, I think no, I think that's a Cabal's. That's a Cabal's and Catacombs card. And Viola yeah. Worm is that a K, KFT card? Yeah, yeah I yeah, think that's yeah. a KFT card. Okay, I, I like it that way because now now we've completed the trifecta. Okay, so there have been two cards in the great category for each of the last expansions. Actually, you count Cube, and you really should count Cube. Um, there, there has actually been, uh, you know, more than two, two or more cards in this category for each of the prior expansions. Mm -hmm. Yep. So once again, look, we've just listed a lot of good neutral cards that uh, ha have come out very recently. And you might expect, it's like, well, this expansion is coming out. We've basically had a super premium uh, neutral card, at least one uh, for every expansion. Um which one is it going to be for this expansion? And the answer is none of them. It's just not going to happen. There is no super premium neutral card that is coming out. Um, and Blizzard has decided to kind of play it safe for this expansion, right? Uh, they um, have given us some tools, uh, you know, some things that we haven't seen before as well. They've also sort of, uh, you know, like shifted stats around for certain drops. That's something that we will be discussing, um, but nothing super powerful on its own, you know. Which in uh, Angoro alone, there were eight cards rated yeah. above the highest rated card we're going to put out. Uh, we rate at least uh, in uh, in Witchwood that's coming out. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. There were eight cards higher than this, and the highest card is almost three times better than the average card compared to Witchwood Grizzly. So, yeah. like, if you take the distance between the average card and how much better than the average card, which would Grizzly is, you have to triple that to get to Primordial Drake. Yep. So, without further ado, the card that you should not be terribly excited about, but is 
pretty definitely the best card in uh well you know one other card uh well two other cards actually get get close but this is the best card in the light forge's opinion in our opinion um that's coming out in the neutral slot for witchwood witchwood grizzly bearing the name of the expansion since i don't know what the card does apparently why don't you tell us a little bit about the witchwood grizzly I will admit the text is a little bit confusing. So Witchwood Grizzly, five mana, three twelve beast, with taunt, battle cry, lose one health for each card in your opponent's hand. And Adukta, I would just tell you, it is not lose one health off of your hero, although they are not specific here, right? It is lose one health on the Witchwood Grizzly. And um I have learned that it is not like um injured blade master in which you can heal it back up. You can't heal it back up. It it just becomes uh like uh, a three six or a three seven, if that is it, and that will be the the new cap. Um, it doesn't. It's not like damaged, and you can heal it. So, so, what kind of decks would this be really good against? I mean, look, as a hunter player, I'm looking at the meta right now. I'm just like, all right, it's over. It's it, like if it wasn't over before, and it was over before, it's so over now, right? With something, for example, like which would grizzly in which. If you just empty out your entire hand by like turn five, and by turn five, if you were playing an aggressive hunter like me, you basically have like one, one or card two cards. Left, yeah. Yeah. So if they drop like a 310 taunt on turn five, I'm like, all right, well, if, if that card in my hand is not like a hunter's mark, it's so over, right? It's so, so over for me. Um, so look, they Blizzard has been trying to add anti aggro tools. This is another one. And we'll see what the speed of the meta is. But this is arena, you know? This mm -hmm. is not going to be... You don't have handlock. You don't have, like, control priests, right? Um, kind of, no matter what, you do still have to play out your cards. And yes, uh, it'll be a little bit slower because, you know, the two drops aren't great. But you still need to play cards. So, which would Grizzly is uh, still going to be... Um, quite good yeah and remember a lot of people are thinking like oh it's gonna be a slow meta we're not gonna play cards you're actually in this meta in the witchwood meta you're actually gonna be losing cards at a faster pace than you may think because card draws are also going down in this meta remember all those nice uh msg cards that discovered a card from all these other oh classes? my gosh yeah, how they're all forget? gone yeah along with the potion guy that was you know for mages and priests and, and warlocks they're all gone all these like put a body on the board draw another card they're, no, they're not here anymore so what you have is a, a lot fewer ways to maintain your hand size than uh than you did pre witchwood especially in the arena where those are good cards and the cards that replace them when it comes to card draw are like pretty bad arena cards like we're gonna see one when we get to the druid that's just like okay i can see constructed uses for it but it has no place in the arena right so once again, your preconceptions about hand sizes now, right? You're thinking like, whoa, wait, wait, I know hand sizes now, and Grizzly is not that good. And you're thinking about the times in which the mage plays, shim like, you know, the Shimmering Tempest into, like, uh, the Cabal Courier into the Cabal Chemist mm -hmm. or something like that, right? And Shimmering Tempest is still here, but the other two are gone. So, like, all of these sort of options in which they just commit a little bit but still draw a card out of it, that's out of the question. So, um, yes, like the meta will still be slow because of the early drop situation. But yeah, we are going to be missing a lot of discover mechanics and a lot of just so, sort of like, um, you know, draw cards, but still put something on the board. Like a lot of these scenarios for the classes in which you expect the biggest hands, yep. right? Like the priests, the warlocks, and the mages. Yep. So even if people aren't playing two drops, your hand size is it's it's not as big as you think. Um, and more importantly, if the mage is going super slow and playing super defensively, do you want to put a three eight, three seven, three six onto the board anyway with five mana? Is that what you want to be doing? No. This is a taunt card with low attack. This is not what you want to be playing in those situations anyway. So if your opponent is playing in a way where they have a hand size of like seven or eight cards. It's not just that, oh, this card is going to suck. It's that you don't want to be playing this card anyway. So it's not very applicable how much this card sucks. What the card is trying to do, with or without that battle cry, is something that you don't need right now. What you actually yeah. want to do is to either temple out and take advantage of your opponent's anti-tempoing, or do your own stuff to get more cards and resources for yourself.
Um, so if you're wondering, um, the prediction is that Witchwood Grizzly, if you play it on turn five, would be somewhere between a three eight and a three nine on uh, in, in most games, maybe closer to a three eight than a three nine. But that's still really good for a five drop, especially one with taunt. So on curve in the arena, this is going to be a good card. Off curve, when your opponent has fewer cards in their hands as the game goes on for longer, this is going to be an insane card. And more importantly, at some point in the arena, the vast majority of decks empty out their hand. Or like they keep one card back. And they do it on the turn that they're trying to like push all in now and go to your face. That's what happens in every single deck. And especially in a more drawn out game without card draw, this is going to happen a lot more frequently. And Witchwood Grizzly is the perfect counter to this inevitability when it comes to long, drawn-out games without card draw. Yep. Anyway, 125. It's not the best card in the world. It's next to, like, Emperor Cobra, Fireplume Phoenix. It's a very good card. It's, like, not quite a super premium, but, like, on the borderline of premium, right? Yep. All right, next card. Blackwalled Pixie. It is a 3-4 that refreshes your hero power. Now, this is going to be different when in uh, in each class. Um, I can quickly look at some of the classes. Uh, mage, I think, is where people uh, people are going to really think about this. It's a 125 in Mage, for example. Whereas, uh, yeah. Um, so, it's a 119 overall. What is it in Warrior? No, it's a 124 in Warrior. Not because you want a hero power, but because Warriors don't have enough good cards uh, <laughs> <laughs> anymore. Right. Uh, There's a lot of considerations other than... Yeah, because yeah. so everything's it, centered, right? So right. if a class has like all not-so-good cards, then everything's going to be boosted up. Um, sad. Sad, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so the Blackwall Pixie... What's important about this card is not really the battle cry and what it does. I'm not going to go too deep into it. What's important about it is that it is a 3-5. And I mean, three, sorry, four. three four, three, and we three, haven't four. seen a three four for three <laughs> mana uh, in the in the neutral slot really since uh, since uh, Spider Tank was rotated out. So this is a new era. Remember, these all have offering odds on them, and they're a good card. It's a good curve card, no matter uh, no matter how you kind of look at it. Um, and so you're going to see this, and you're going to see a meta with a bunch of three fours in it now. Now that Blackwall Pixie is a card, and I'm going to go on to the next card. This is uh, one thirteen. A little bit worse than Blackwall Pixie, but not by much. Nightmare Amalgam, which is uh, three four, and it has all the you know it's an elemental, a mech, a demon, whatever. Um, but the big point is that it's a three four. And what are three fours good at, Murps? What are three fours for three mana really good at? Dominating two drops. Dominating two drops. So once again. Two drops are not looking so hot. Uh, when you have a 4-3, which is still very good, um, I play it on turn 3, your 3-2s can trade with the 4-3s. It makes it very awkward if your opponent has two drops. If you have a 3-4, it doesn't matter what two drop your opponent plays. Like, you got them. Right. And uh, what this does, it's sort of like um, a rock-paper-scissors effect, right? So what happens when the meta is filled with 4-3s, and we had a lot of 4-3s uh, mm -hmm. like previous, And they're right? rotating out for the most part. Right. It means that three twos are preferable than two threes, right? Like three twos are good, but that also has an effect on one drops. And then what happens now when three fours are good? Three fours are good, which means that it sort of disincentivizes people to pick um, two drops, right? And yeah. if two drops are not as important, but now like four threes are also safer. Exactly. Right? Like, yeah, yeah. Four so, threes got better too. Threes just got better. Threes just got better. So it it also means just like three. You know, the game really does start on three because yeah. it doesn't just mean that oh three fours are the way to go now because three fours are so are going to be so prominent. It kind of chases out two drops mm -hmm. and other uh, the four threes which do very well against you know it just trades with the three fours. Um, that is a lot safer now. So it, it solidifies this three-drop meta. To give you an idea of the difference, Injure Blademaster is a 105, and Tangle for Mystic, which is a three-mana 3-4, three, is a 102. And mm -hmm. Tangle for Mystic has a battle cry, but it gives both players the same like kind of card, so it's not a very impactful battle cry. Um, 
So normally three fours would have a much larger edge over four threes. But in this meta, without the two drops, four threes are about as good as three fours, maybe even better. Um, and again, Tango for Mystic. 102, another 3-4 common. I think we covered all the 3-4 commons, but uh, there's there's three of I mean, 3-4 uh, neutrals. There's three of them. That's an insanely large number when they also have uh, offering rate bonuses. Um, yep. Okay, so why don't you talk about this next one? This is my favorite card. Swift Messenger? Swift Messenger. Swift Messenger. It's your favorite. And we had a long discussion. If you listen to the Light Forge, you guys kind of already know the discussion. But Swift Messenger, four mana, two, six, rush each turn. This is in your hand. Swap its attack. And, and when I health. say it's my favorite card, I mean the exact opposite of that, by the way. I, right, I hate right. this card. Like the design <laughs> is so awful. So look, um, it can only target minions, obviously. That's what rush means. Uh, so it is either. Um, like a really good Reckless Rocketeer, right? Or uh, it is like uh, a better Stormwood Knight. So in any case, it is good. What it does is it does introduce awkwardness onto your turns if yes. you're using it. And it so requires planning. It, right? that, if you're wondering why it's only a 117 and why, for example, this is not a super premium card, if you're looking at it as like a fireball, right? It would be a super premium card. Yes, but, if it, yeah, yeah. If it right. was a fireball, this thing would be like way up there. Yeah, it'd be like a 160, whatever the heck we rate fireball at mage. But, and even higher, because you can play it even without a target. Um, but it's not, because you don't get to choose whether it's a 2-6 or a 6-2. I think a lot of people, when they see this swapping thing, they're like, oh, I get to choose when to play, so I get to choose what to do it as. But you don't. What this means is half the time you need a fireball, you don't have a fireball. You have a lame 2-6 that's not going to get the job done. So... That's the like a very big penalty. You can turn plan, but when it comes to rush minions, rush minions are a response, right? They are an answer to what your opponent does. And what do answers require? Not planning. You don't plan to answer their stuff. And you definitely don't plan to answer their stuff only on odd turns or only on even turns. Right. Like, you want your answers to be able to answer their stuff whenever they play the stuff. And this is only an answer half the time, which makes it a pretty crappy answer, even though the value is there when you hit it. Right. So this is one of those things in which, um, also because it's so, the stats are so polarized, right? 2-6 or a 6-2. Um, if it was just like 4-5 or a 5-4, it's like, okay it doesn't matter like so much mm -hmm. right but because it's so polarized as well um it's gonna be really tough um it, it's it's gonna be like really tough and it's gonna create like so many awkward scenarios and what we talked about on the light forge is <laughs> when you don't have this card when it's on the oh other side God. when your opponents have it this is why um, this is the worst card design in this entire set i, I don't i don't know about that i i I will talk about what I think is the worst design card in the set. And it's actually one of the worst cards rated. <laughs> but, um, right. Well, design doesn't necessarily like, have anything to do with power, right? Fine. Sometimes. I, I, I can't say nothing. But, um, yeah. So, this does make your reads a little bit tougher. Uh, because <laughs> if you put out, like, a, a big drop and they didn't, it, like, that kind of had to be killed... Um, or they really want to kill, and then they played like sort of a suboptimal turn. Mm -hmm. You cannot exactly say they don't have it, right? They don't have a way to deal with it, so I'm going to go more all in on this minion or something like that, um, because they can get rid of it next turn, presumably. So it does change that risk calculation, um, and, and it makes your reads uh, a lot less sort of you know like concrete. Yeah, um, that's. It's horrible. It's horrible. Because uh, your reads are only valid for a couple turns before they draw more cards, and you're like, well, you know, now they've drawn four cards. What read did I really have? And now half of those turns are invalid. Mm -hmm. Like, this is, it's horrible. Um, and then you add that swing potential of this, which is a two temple swing potential, right? Four right. mana, deal six damage. It's, it's a horrible, horrible card. So, once again, and I think people need to realize. Uh, this is like still a very good like we're trashing on it a lot. Oh no, I'm saying horrible as a horrible design. Right, right, like, right, right. Effect wise, it's rated like a one point higher than a dark right. iron dwarf. Right? Exactly. Like, I think we still need to remember it's one point higher than dark iron dwarf, yeah, which is it's like a good card. A really good card. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, and it's not like, oh, if you're a good player, don't take it. Like, no, still take it. You're just a little more constrained by it in ways you don't want to be. But it's an answer, right? You're not really at a disadvantage compared to the average player. It's just kind of a dumb card for you to be holding because, like, turn planning works more when there's no rush attached to these health uh, and attack swapping cards. Turn planning is less important when you need this to be an answer. At that point, it's just what your opponent happens to do on which turn. And they're not thinking about it strategically either because they don't know you have this card. Mm Mm-hmm. Horrible. Anyway, uh, this guy's buddy, which is rated one point lower, but basically the same score, is the 8-mana Gilnean Royal Guard. 3-8, Divine Shield, Rush, swaps to be an 8-3. Now, we'll we'll get this out of the way really quickly. If it's an 8-3 and it kills an 8-8 and it leaves an 8-3 body on the board, it's really good. Yes, it's really good in the best-case scenario. But you can't look at the best-case scenario... Because it's, one, it's literally only going to happen half the time. That 8-8 eight, eight is not going to be an 8-8 eight, eight still if you wait one more turn. The 8-8 eight, eight is going to eat something on your board or you're going to be dead. And two, you can't play this as a 3-8 Divine Shield. A 3-8 Divine Shield is pretty bad. Like, that's kind of a desperation move for 8 mana. And three, it's 8 mana. It's 8 mana. You can't, I mean, that's the thing. Like, the, the Swift Messenger is 4 mana. You can play it so many turns earlier when the game matters so much more. When you like, that's when games are like won and lost, right? Like, if you can't take care of an opponent's thing, it like snowballs out of control. With Swift Messenger, you can. For Ganea Royal Guard, it's like at eight mana. You have so many like options at that point. Um, so that's why it's not like rated much higher. I know a lot of people look at this card and think, like, oh my god, here's the premium card. And again, I think they're doing this mental gymnastic thing where they're like, I get to pick whether it's an 8-3 or a 3-8. You, you don't, because it's an answer. You don't get to pick answers. Um, and, and in the same way, you're going to actually see these health swapping cards get rated a bit better. I think more uh, more to your mental ratings of these cards when they don't have rush. Because yep. then you're not making the mistake of thinking that you can control when it comes out. You know, you are now, are now properly anticipating what turn planning has to happen. Um, so that's going to be a ro- Royal Guard. Uh, it's going to be an interesting card in the arena, but this with the Swift Messenger is going to screw up the entirety of arena. Like, these two cards are going to be responsible for lowering the skill level of the arena significantly compared to if they were not in this set. Of course, this set overall, I'm sure Murphs will argue, is pretty high skill intensive because it's so, like... Like, power levels are constrained, it's all on the board, it's probably going to be slower, like, there's a lot of things going for skill in, in this set, I do agree. Nope, Hunter's going to suck, so there is no skill. No skill, no there's skill. no skill, Hunter sucks, there's no skill involved. <laughs> like, don't don't let anyone tell you otherwise, alright, no skill. Um, but yeah, so that's sort of uh, the, the Gilnean Royal Guard, and part of what takes away from these scores, like, it even has a Divine Shield, right? That's awesome. But part of what takes away from the score is just the fact that it's so different on every single turn, right? 3-8 versus 8-3. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, yeah. Um, and it's still a good card. It's still a 116. Yeah. Like, all right. Uh, they made a card that's... I just hate these cards that are way worse for good players than bad players. And uh, the even yeah. worse part about this card, and I'm going to reiterate this. I made a big point about it on, in the Light Forge. If you listen to the last Light Forge uh, podcast, you'll you'll hear me like go on about this. But... The very fact that these cards are going to be prevalent in the meta means that regardless of whether your opponent has these cards or not, you no longer have reads. It just messes up the entire game no, 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 when it, it comes to reads. You don't have you don't reads, have reads when reads it comes to large removal. Okay. okay, your reads are much less concrete when it comes <laughs> to whether your opponent has a, a large-ish removal or not. And that's a very important read in the arena. That's like one of your like four basic reads. All right. If you want to hear the 20-minute version of this, please listen to this past week's Light Forge. But I think we should move on. All right. Okay, next card. We talked about this in the last episode as an example. It's a Furious Etten. It's a 5-9 taunt for 7 mana. Um, it's Bog Creeper's spiritual successor. It's a little bit less good than Bog Creeper, maybe. Um, but I actually think for this meta, it's a little bit better than Bog Creeper. Because that 5 attack just means so much. Um at least, yeah, it's just my my views on it. Anyway, it's a 116. You're going to pick it. You're not going to be, like, happy or unhappy with it. Right? Yep. There's not much to say about it. 
No, not much to say about it. They, I thought they take away Bot Creeper, but it's really just its cousin. Mm -hmm. right. So next, next one, you want to talk about this? Yeah. All right. Look, uh, we just talked about the five damage barrier, right? Well, this is something that will provide you with five damage. It is the Muck Hunter, five mana, five eight with Rush. Oh my God, such amazing stats. Battle cry, summon two two one mucklings for your opponent. So not as good. Little or known you... fact: mucklings draw your opponent a card when dead. Wait, what? No, no, I'm kidding. I'm like, wait, what? Like, did I just get this wrong? Like, then why do we write this so high? Like, what? <laughs> I'm kidding. It's just um, a two one minion. I know, I know. Okay, okay, good, good. I was like. <laughs> There is some part of me which which feels as though that's wrong. Um, so, look, we've seen this and we've sort of learned the mistakes from this previously. I remember the first time something like this was printed in uh, Hungry Dragon, right? Um, and we, I mean, everyone thought that card was going to be insane. But turns out, wow, spawning minions for your opponent is not good. They're um, really annoying. They're really annoying. It gives your opponent options. And yes... You know, the response I always see is like, oh, just clear it with a with an AoE. Just use a hero power on it. And it's like, no, that takes cards and mana. Like, it's not just free, you know? It doesn't come from, like, nowhere. So with a card like Muck Hunter, it's going to be a little bit awkward. But Rush is still really good, right? Rush is good. Also, you compare this with MCT, which I hate. <laughs> I hate the fact that you compare this with MCT. Oh, like you could be like, that's are nice. you not gonna have two minions because you are you're afraid of Muck Hunter into MCT? No. And it's just it's stupid. It's stupid. Anyway. Uh, fortunately, it is an epic minion, which means it's gonna be seen a six as often as a spell, for example, from the same set. So yeah. There's, there's a little upside in its rarity. Uh, one thing I do want to point out is that it does match up very well with those like things like Etten or Hungry Dragon that generates a minion for your opponent, even though this generates two because it itself has initiative. So yeah, yeah. it's doing something, and then it gives your opponent two things that does stuff. So effectively, you're giving your opponent one thing that can do stuff on the next turn, which is the same as uh, as uh, as if you did a Hungry Etten. Um, and it has the bonus of being even better to pair with a board clear, right? That's why people keep mentioning it. It's because the board clear is really, really, really effective if you can muck hunter and board clear. But there's only so many board clears in the game, and um, you're going to have to combo it. It's really more of a combo card than anything. Um, if you don't have the combo, it's functional. Like It's fine. It's fine yeah. in your deck, but it's not going to really achieve any great amount of value. And look... The initiative is always good, right? And you getting the initiative first yeah. is always worth something. Yeah, it's right? a, it's an answer, right, to potential right. threats because you kill their. I don't know. Let's say, uh, what do you call these things? Um, the the three three that generates one two taunts, green jelly. You kill their green jelly with your muck hunter, and they get two two ones. Like so what? Right? right like so right. what that they get two two ones? That's not what you're afraid of. What you really needed to happen was their green jelly being like off the board. Right, or you're afraid that their like daring reporter is going to keep on growing, mm -hmm. right? Something like Except that. Except you're so. never going to be afraid of their daring reporter anymore because the daring reporter is not reporting. Oh shoot, she's retired. All right, questing adventurer, <laughs> the uh, the forever daring mm -hmm. reporter. Um, anyways, yeah, so that's that's sort of it. Um, Rush is always good, but summoning double two ones is real bad all right mossy horror six mana to seven with a shadow word horror attached to it because shadow word horror was not annoying enough for just priests to have everybody should have shadow word horror um right. this is kind of the spiritual successor to um corrupted seer which deals two damage to everything this destroys all minions with two or less attack now the corrupted seer has thankfully rotated out yeah. uh i mean this is much worse than, like, like basically, uh, more often you want two damage than destroy things with two. Oh uh, yeah, two or less. Yeah, because you yeah. can deal two damage after you've hurt their like six six. Whereas right. this, you're always dealing with something with low attack. Um, but you know, it uh, it also is a two seven and not a two three for that reason. I think. Uh, right at the same time, look, you are. 
Once again, the effect you get from Corrupted Seer is consistent enough that you don't mind the body only being like a 2-3, right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times you're getting like a Consecration attached with it. For Mossy Horror, it's like at that point in the game, you know, you can get rid of a few things, but if you don't get rid of anything, or if you only get rid of one thing that's like pretty inconsequential, which is kind of, you know, what two or less attack things are, um, most of the time. Yeah, you're just basically a Kodo body. It's like about right. the same value, I'd say, as a Kodo body in the late game. Right. Um, and also, if you have like a Basilisk on your side that you don't want to kill, then it becomes a little bit awkward, right? And it's, you know, still awkward with the uh, Corrupted Seer, but, but once it again... can kill a Basilisk on your opponent's side. It could. It definitely could as well. But once again, you know, we see the awkwardness of, of it and we see the fact that, you know, you're paying a lot of stats for this, this effect. So that's why it's not, like, that good. And I think a lot of people see the work that Shadow Word, um, the Shadow Word Horror does in Constructed, mm -hmm. right? Because, like, uh, uh, whether for Dew Paladin or just, like, Murak Paladin, they, like, sort of run rampant on... Um, Unconstructed and Shadow War Horror is amazing. I forgot Shadow War Horror rotated out. I was gonna check it on uh, on our tier list. Yeah, I could check it on our live tier list right now. And uh, Shadow War Horror for Priest is a ninety-seven. Yeah, so it's not the most amazing card in the arena. Right. So it's easy to think that like, oh man, because it is so good in Constructed because it combats like you know this really good deck, um, it should be good in arena as well. And that's just not the case. Yep. Splitting Fester Root. Um, I'm not going to say anything about this. I think we can move on to 8 mana, 4-4. Four, four, create some 2-2s. Two, Each of the 2-2s two, creates 1-1s. One, it's a straight copy from an MTG card. Um, yeah. It's, it's okay. Much, yeah, it's just a much worse Violet Worm, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's like a very sticky body. Uh, it costs the same, but your initial body is much smaller. And you want that big initial body in the Violet Worm. So... Yep, it's an okay yep. card. We rated a 112. It's not, like, absolutely horrible because they sometimes still have... Like, if they don't remove your minion, you can buff it. You can do other yeah. things with it. You can hit their face. Like, it, it serves purposes. Um, and they really can't remove it. This is, like, insanely difficult to remove. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it does serve a purpose. You'll you'll figure out what, what situations... It's really hard to describe what situations you use it for. But, like, the easiest one is, like, I put it down, I need four damage to your opponent, to your face. You better start taunting. Or, like, I have buffs. Now I can steed something. Yep. Especially if I steed this. It'll die, guaranteed. And then I'll get a whole bunch of crap. Like, you could do plenty of stuff with this. Um... And I think we're actually going to end this episode after the next two cards because we talk a lot about the good cards because they have more impact and we're probably going to talk a lot less about the bad cards. That sounds good. Okay, so the next card is Deranged Doctor, which is an 8-mana eight 8-8. Eight eight. Once again, great target for the Gilnean, right? <laughs> um, with Death Rattle, restore 8 health to your hero. Before I talk about like the meta implications and, and all the stuff that has to do with the like the importance of this card what the heck is the range about this doctor it's like he's just restoring health like look at i would have expected him. it's like death rattle deal eight damage split among the board right like that's deranged what is the it's like he but help me understand him this card he looks crazy he's so crazy he's gonna heal you for a set amount <laughs> <laughs> like what is deranged about that he really like, likes eights Oh my god, so deranged. I mean, most people would say crazy. ultimate infestation is pretty crazy. Oh man. Anyways, look. Um, 8 mana 8-8 eight, eight is like, if you just took those stats with no additional effects, it would be like not a good card, pretty right? Bad. But this thing is out of 110. Base matters. Like, like health has mattered more and more recently. Mm -hmm. And this restores a good amount uh, to their, um, yeah. you know, to your hero. Now, it is still a death rattle though. Yeah. Right? So you don't get the health has to die. In. Yeah, it has to die. Um maybe that's what it's so deranged about it. He made like an incentive to kill him off. Oh. oh. I see the deranged. Ah, this. There we go. There we go. I figured it out. Great. Um, but yeah, so this is one of those cards in which I'm I'm like, the more I look at it, 
I'm just like, yeah, you know what? The the eight health definitely does matter. You know, health matters more and more. And especially when the the meta slows down. People think that when the meta slows down, health matters less. Like I would Ooh. like that is definitely not the case, right? It, like even if hunters are bad, um, and once again, uh, you know, Dr. Stein has reminded me, he's like, oh, you can't be sure hunters are bad because of the bucket system. And right. I can't. I'm, I'm just saying they're probably still going to be bad. But it's like just because hunters are probably going to be bad um, doesn't mean the health doesn't matter. Because in a control battle, if you are low in health, it limits like all of your options, right? Mm-hmm. If you have seven cards in your hand, but your health is low, four of those cards are not options anymore. Yep. Like you only have three cards. So suddenly you're going three cards up against their entire arsenal, um, which is really, really bad. So health matters obviously a, a ton when you're facing aggro but it also matters because it gives you more choices like it, it, it allows you to the set other person to 15 first yeah that's the person that the other person has to keep trading into and as the person who's gotten your opponent to 15 health you just got to keep putting stuff down and you're forcing your opponents to make awkward trades like it has a giant impact on how trades work on the board yep um okay and for the last card in this episode before we take a short break um and then go through the rest of the cards it is the worgen abomination at the end of your turn deal two damage to all other damage minions that means not the worgen abomination he's safe but everybody else gets damage so this is the rating of this card not including because we we haven't done this yet, um, but we will. So this is why the tier is going to look a little bit different um, on Thursday than it does now. We're still working on it. We've only gotten the card dump like maybe like thirty six hours ago, not even. Uh, so it's it, you know we've been working as fast as we could. But um, if you have like a mage, for example, you can now just like ping something and it'll actually deal three damage. Um, rogues, druids, kind of same things. Paladins can run a one one in if you have it. Uh, it, you could do some pretty interesting things with this besides just letting it trigger initially to deal two damage to a particular minion and have a 6-6 six, six out. Um, on the flip side, uh, you, you can't really get good trades anymore either if you happen to control the board because all of your good trades, you, your guys get to die at the end probably. Yep. So uh, this is a card I kind of wrestled with back and forth, right? Thinking about it. I'm like, oh man, this is such a good effect sometimes right yeah. and other times it's like oh man this is this is also one of those things in which it's there's so many possibilities but i i force myself to re- like think about like sort of all the times in which it's bad and try to average those out right and i could be wrong here but i'm like on average i think you know the effect you're not going to get like the super premium uh like primordial drake effect you know that a lot of people might be thinking about um and a lot of times it it'll be awkward as well because Mm -hmm. it also damages your minions right so sometimes you can't play it so i think where we have it is fine um but this is one in which it is going to be so meta dependent right look at the speed look at what board state uh like is most likely going into uh the later turns um, so this is something I'll keep an eye out for, uh, and we'll see um, also how often we see it, right? Like how often we we see it. So this is one of those cards uh, that I'm looking forward to just learning more about and seeing if I like how to play around it, if I need to play around it, etc. Yeah, very interesting card. Love the design, and uh, we'll see. We'll we'll see what happens to it. Um, okay, so those are all the cards that are kind of, uh, this was 109, so I cheated a little. But it's 110 and above. They're good cards. They're cards you want in your deck. They're at least around the average value of cards in your deck, if not above that. Um, and you may have noticed we only did like 10 cards uh, because there's not that many good cards in, uh, in Witchwood, especially in the neutral category. Uh, we'll see you in the next episode when we talk about all the other neutral cards. We're going to go a lot faster because a lot of these are not very good and a lot of these you're, you're just not really going to see. Yep. Um, but yeah, um, until you know, we'll see you in the next episode. We're going to take a short break here. Uh, don't go anywhere. Okay, we okay. can 